<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Victor Allen's New News Sports. Written, directed, produced by Victor Allen. The man the ladies have nicknamed Sexual Chocolate. Here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, he's sick. That's a lot of extra, man. Yeah. That's a lot of extra. Yeah, I watched all that Carson. Oh, you did? You know, you know, I came up watching that stuff, so I'm still trying to recreate. You know, what's the cup in the ear thing? Maybe I need to cup my ear. And here he is. Thinking, Here's Vic. Uh, that, that's because they want to hear themselves. <laughs> oh, is that what? It, yeah, why they, would that help you hear yourself? Because you tune out <laughs> the noise on the other side. No, they didn't have headphones. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And a volume control. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, man. Okay, you guys. Hey, welcome to New New Sports. You know how we do it. I don't bring anything new. We just talk it up as if we're outside. We're in the business. We're around. We just talk about it. And, you know, some things you can't stay away from. And to me, uh, in New New Sports, it's the social talk around sports, not necessarily reporting anything you don't know. So to me, I thought there was one, two wonderful subjects yesterday that came up, and you couldn't ignore them. Number one, I call it the two-step. Now, Mario knows when I say the two-step. What better way to have football bounty susp uh, suspensions vacated and if you're a part of the NFL and you're that organization that says, you know what will be better? Let's rescue ourselves. We can look like we're doing the right thing. We can't have Roger go back and back up against what he was doing to push for the assumption that all of you guys are guilty. Now, we're not saying all those who have received penalties don't deserve it. We're saying in the real world, everybody knows it's what you can prove. So... You get Tagley Boo. He comes in. And I said, now, before mm. he came in, Mario, mm. obviously they had a meeting. He says, you know, let's send Tagley a blue to go out and And how many attorneys him. were at that meeting? Uh, oh, a whole How bunch. many attorneys do you they, think? Do you think it was less than six? Man. You think it was six? You think oh, it was eight or ten covered, attorneys? This, this is a smooth. Yeah, how many? You know that was a big room with yes. the big old table. That yes. ain't the little old meeting. <laughs> right. That's the big ass table meeting. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> with legal taking up half the table. Hey, look. Let me say this. <laughs> let me. And now you guys already know that Jonathan Vilma basically is going to be kind of the, what they call the front man on this because now he goes into the defamation suit. Mario and I, we talked about that. He may not win, but what he's going to do is set an historic standard. Is it really about winning, or is it about going that the not, Roger Goodell now is going to be on the defensive? See, at first it was Jonathan. Now. No, he's on the defensive. He's on it's, the a, defensive. it's about both. Yeah. It's really about both because here's the issue. It is so convoluted and dirty that you can't say what the real legal implications are. You could just say what the problems are right because this is the kind of thing where it takes a bunch of attorneys to to wriggle it out right why some people already been punished Vic how right. do you take that back I know but when, when Sean when Sean Payton right that's yep. what, can't take it back he's already been Done. sat out Burned. a year how right. do you take that back right how, remember I already told you I think he's been paid underneath the table right to be quiet because legally a bunch of people can sue the NFL and they are a deep pocket. Right. This is when attorneys take your case on contingency. Right. You gonna sue the NFL and you got a case? Oh hell yeah. <laughs> That's I'll right. take this one. We can sue them <laughs> right. for all the show. Oh Lord, they get a hard on for that. Well, right. I mean, if you don't even realize you think about what it went no, let me hold on one second because I think that's the um uh, that that's there. the police. I think they're heading up to Mac's house. Something about the boat. But let's on, move on. <laughs> Mac, I'm not hollering at you, man. I'm just keeping it in real. Look, bottom line is it has started off from a man who's basically going, you're changing the foundation of my lifestyle. If this stays with me once I'm out of football, which is a short li lifespan, I am not saying that Jonathan is innocent. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that if when you play the game, you know, you play the game. And sometimes you're too much into yourself. And right now, everybody's talking about Roger and his last effort to turn around, for example, and take kickoff returns out of the game of football. Now, we can understand stuff. That is not for the betterment of health and safety as, as much as it is that they have to t take away that the lawsuit that may be coming from those who have been injured. And, of course, those are not being kind of put in front of us because there's some other issues and some other information I can't even test to, talk to, or even bring to you because I'm not qualified to do that. So just to say this, Jonathan turns around and says, okay, to himself, let's just say this, Mario. You're in the room with Jonathan. Jonathan is a part of the bounty thing. 
you're one of the teammates. Do you turn on him or do you go like, no, you, I'm not the turncoat. I know he may be guilty, but I'm not turning. Do you turn on him? No, I don't think you turn on him. I think you just you do the right thing. You stick to the truth. Right. The issue is that it's a very vague area. He never should have handled it like this. Football has always included violence. That's right. what it was based on. Right. Therefore, inherently, you're going to have problems True. with this. The issue is that you've come into a new era of understanding. And when new eras of understanding come about, people must change. You have a new understanding that certain sports are damaging to people. You also have a cultural movement which says you can't do employment. You can't have a job or a game that causes damage to people. Right. It's of that time. That's why we don't have gladiators. You can't say let's duel to the death and people sign an agreement that we say it's okay. Right. And then go duel to the death. We right. won't let you. Right. So football has a problem, and that is inherently dangerous. Right. So the kickoffs, like we said, the punt, mm -hmm. statistically, because now you have people who are getting, what, uh, 80 yards apart, 60 yards, whatever, right. building up a head of steam and running at each other. It's always guess, been that way. Yeah, guess what? Right. That's where a lot of them get hurt. Right. So they got to take that out. They're going to have. They're going to be about to make it so you don't hit below the waist. Right. No, I understand that. They're, they're about to change to the whole. Up. The whole game of football is about in, in, in the next two to three years. Right. With the goal being that those coming up who are young will get used to a new game of football. And there's no. And there's no problem with that because let's look over the time. If you go look at the pads and what they used to do, it has gotten better. But the athletes have gotten stronger. So it's, it's kind oh, of it, it going back and forth here where, yeah, they've advanced on this. But I'm not even going to get into that. What I'm trying to get at is, the, the, it, is do we give credit at all to Tagliabu? See, if it's the two-step. The two-step is the commission saying, I got you. I got to rescue you. Because then, I mean, in a sense, for doing your it. job, I mean, for doing your job, which is to review a case and make a ruling, I guess we do. You're supposed to be able to do that anyway. That's your job. Right. Now, he's the former commission before the commission. Right. But he was hired to do this job. See, I go like, if that's your job. Right. There's, I, have, I, I love it when you do your any job exceptional, but we are supposed to have certain expectations. And one of those is that you should be able to do your job. Right. That should be just, unfortunately, for a lot of us. Right. We can't get out of bed in the morning. Right. Okay, so we don't do our job. Right. So, the, so Tagliabu gets to sit there and say, I have a distinct advantage of knowing legally. Legally, we don't stand a clear chance to win this. I was listening to a, a show with uh, Stephen A. Smith where he was really the man who told it what they call the support, just unblemished of Roger Goodell. I mean, he said, this is the NFL. Billions and billions of dollars. You know, they run this bitch. And he had to sit there and say today, after everything I've seen, I have to admit to America, I was totally wrong. I said, why? Because you gave the man who probably gave himself, Roger Goodell says, you know, I am the man. You know, I can run this bitch. Mm -hmm. So now what happens? Jonathan is going, I'm not going to sit quietly. Tagliabu is saying we need to offset this because it's going down a road where it doesn't look like we have a clear win. So, yeah, I agree with you, Mario. Oh, they've told him. Right. Remember how many attorneys are in on this? Yes. So they've told him. Attorneys, they know they love to talk. This is what they do. They look you dead in your eye. You're screwed. <laughs> That's right. It's done. This is damage control oh, now. It's done. And by the oh. way, it's go we need another... 500,000. We're going to need about coming. a million retainers. Right. There's about a million, over a million because dollars in estimated, I'm sure, legal and, fees. And it's not just Jonathan. Now, we, I don't know if the New Orleans coach, I don't know if he's going to go after it that way. Sometimes when you're too close to the top, it's a little bit different. He's a coach also, and he works for the owners. But the other players who say, hey, I have no allegiance. I get traded on the drop of a dime. You don't think that others have sat back and says, you know, if you have vacated his, then what about everybody else? And since they all have been vacated, don't you think they're all going to ride the bus together and jump on this train? They, oh, yeah. So bottom line is we're just saying the two-step is in full effect. We probably won't see anything happen. And they'll string this out for a while so it's removed as a top subject as much as possible and hopefully go through the playoffs where everybody's going to talk about the playoffs. And then after that, then we'll start seeing more of it. But in the meantime, that I couldn't avoid that, man, because it was just so obvious. No, because they're it, trying to play it down the real big impact, even the media, because that's their advertiser. Huge money, that's power right. brokers in this. Right. Right. So, but they ain't going to give us nothing, so we might as well talk about it. <laughs>
<laughs> but yeah, that's why you don't hear about it. They are screwed. That's right. They are screwed. They're and believe me, they're working on saving their product because right. they have to morph it in the next two to five years, and right. they intend to. Right. You're gonna watch football morph. Right. Okay. And they also need to deal with this, and they need to go back and tell homeboy and say, "Listen, next time you talk to us before you do these things, right?" Right. Is there right? Let me ask you this real quick, because because you, I think I know you, kind of know what your response is going to be. Is this in, in a roundabout way, an admission of guilt, indirect admission of guilt that it, Rodney it, did, it did is, the wrong thing? It is an indirect admission. It, it's done in the way that lawyers script it so that you don't have – you're trying to minimize the legal damages. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually admit. So they know they're a deep pocket. Right. So they already are on the hook. Right. And even and this is the type of thing where you get those extra damages. Like if Sean Payton could argue how this impacted his career. Right. To be off. Right. Jonathan Vilma could talk about how this has a lack. He says, a lasting impact on his ability to get jobs as an announcer. Right. That's right. So he there's a bunch of deep pocket things, and that's why it's all damage control. Oh, yeah. Bend over, NFL. <laughs> Take the big one. <laughs> no Astro Glide. Oh, it's going it. to be a dry one. <laughs> it's going to be a dry one. So <laughs> we just want to let you guys know, we're not blaming Paul, but if you had to turn around and say, Let's make us the ones that rescue us. Great way to do it. I mean, I, if I had to think of the best solution with less losses, hopefully, I would say we all rescue ourselves. It'll look like we're doing the right thing. Because right now, the question is going to be, Mario, is how long will Roger be in that seat as the commissioner? Mm -hmm. And that's the one. Yeah, that's not long. Move. Not long. <laughs> not long. No, but no. It, well, actually, to tell you the truth. It depends how the decision was actually made. For all we know, right? that was a group decision made by a bunch of the ownership, and his That's job right. is to take the fall for it. That's right. It could That's totally right. be that. It, they could, it, in the back can. room, they would be saying, you know, hey, we paying you, dude. Right. Take the heat. That's your job. Right. You know, that's why we pay you so that when we F up, you are out in public to take the heat. Let me ask you something. Is it better for a commissioner? I know this is biased, and it's a history that we don't have in, in NFL in the NFL as commissioners. People are suggesting should they take a wider view of looking at commissioners who either coached, played, or been involved in the game, not just executives who have studied from a perspective of higher academia and come down and crunch the numbers, and just think of it as the best way to operate with efficiency. But those who are on both sides and people were throwing up names that I know are not going to be commissioners. John Madden, people who can look at philosophically both sides and look at it health wise, coaching wise, management wise, ownership wise, or do we stay with the same model? Will that change? Do you, what do you think? I think it's done very much like how you select the presidency and people who have those opinions have them because they really don't understand what's occurring. Right. For example, they actually think that it's the commissioner's job. Right. To do things to help the players. He represents the owners. He represents the owners. Right. Okay, period. Right. Just like people think it's the president's job to take care of the little man. Right. Never has been the president's. It hasn't even been the government's job, right. to tell you the truth. Okay? You think it is because that's your impression. Right. See what I'm saying? Right. It's like you think you have rights. <laughs> Till you go down there and try to get something done with your rights. Not it. And then you find you don't have rights. Not it. So that comes from people's misunderstanding of what the commissioner's job is. See what I'm saying? Right. The public, a lot of the sports fans, we should have a commissioner who does this. We should have a... That's because you think the commissioner is there for you. He's not for you, asshole. He's for the owners. That's right. <laughs> now it makes sense. Everything he does is to protect that product and the ownership. What do you think? And the rest is a public image display. They can still do that. <clears throat> so a former coach or someone who's been involved no, in the game. No, to me, then you pick people. In other words, when I have a job, you pick the people whose qualities are skilled in that area. Right. There's nothing about coaching to me right. that has anything to do with this. Or anyone inside the No, NFL it really has not it's yeah. a corporate job. Yeah, that's it. It's I'm a just... corporate job and so they think it has all this sporting stuff and it really doesn't. It's a corporate job. Right. And so they the person in other words, the same thing I said about presidential debates. Right. How stupid. Right. Okay, so I got a job. 
And the way I'm going to pick is have my two best candidates get together and answer questions about shit that has nothing to do with the job. No, no, I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying this yeah, is what people I'm, think. This, I know. This is what people think. So they think the same thing about the commissioner. They right. think it's supposed to be selected in this way because right. they have a misunderstanding. No no, no. no. You get a guy you never have heard about. Because his job is to be hatchet man right. for us, and right. that's why. It's Except he keep, gets, he has to look nice well, doing well, it. Well, the whole idea is to keep the keep keep everybody under control. There you them. go. Now I do think it will come a day where you have somebody not only because we have a lot of players in the league who I am proud to say that I'm glad that they went to higher academia learning have turned out to be very intelligent, have been successful executives. And they've already played positions already in organizations, even as a limited player, not as much as one who we know. It's like the Al Davis. There will be the Al Davis who comes on and say, not only did I play on the field, but I'm a game changer. That's going to come. I don't know how long, but I, I agree with you, Mario. Somebody yeah, in like corporate, that's different. In the early days of things where it's not so much run by business people, when it's not the same big money thing, right. then you get those kind of maverick activities right. and all that. Right. Once it becomes big in corporate, for the most people, part, people told the line because the other financial ventures, like Mark Cuban, yeah. he can only be so rowdy. That's right. That's right. And, and then that's yeah. it. It's yeah. a corporate multi-million thing with a lot of people's money. And he knows how to be yeah, successful it, it at, at the level work. that's important to him. Okay. Totally. All right. Let, let's go over here. We've got to ask this question. I try to avoid this team, but I can't. And when I can't avoid you, this team. <laughs> what, you try to avoid him. I try to avoid him. And I can't help him. When this team hits the media, they just serve up. They just serve up opportunity to talk about, about them. And it's the Lakers. And the only reason why I say that. It's because I have a question. Let's just forget about that they lost against Cleveland. Kyrie Irving came out, played his ass off. Excuse my language for those who need it. No ass me. anymore. Yeah, he, 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 did it. he did it. The other part is Kobe delivered his 42. Now, the more points he delivered, unfortunately, everybody's going to swarm around the man Mike D'Antoni. And let's just say it, Mike did go off in his own little way about saying, in response to practicing defense from a reporter who asked about the defense, he says, yes. We play, we practice for half an hour. <laughs> I know he's being sarcastic. Maybe, maybe not, because we didn't hear the audio. So here's my question. Do you give them any food to jump on situations like this when you know those questions are coming? And even with, after that, Mario, the part is, what's more important here? Do we need that Lakers to be formidable for the NBA to have a team to hate and to or love? Because right now, you don't hate Miami Heat. You don't hear a chance of beat heat you hear beat la and everybody rides that bandwagon is it better for la to be successful to keep the nba thriving it's like the new york yankees uh more or less but that's not really that pertinent the nba for better or worse has a lot of stories to be told and actually david stern has actually done better than say the nfl right at capitalizing on the social media movement now let me say this wasn't always so much him right and a lot of it had to do with the players who, much as we despise their off-the-court activity sometimes, the fact that they turned them into franchises and the fact that it was actually one of their women. Right. You know, Shawnee O'Neal. Right. Okay, with Shaq's ex. Yeah. Turned the basketball wise franchise into a whole thing. So, Vic, the, the NBA, unlike the NFL, seems to have always had a little bit more of a lover's relationship with media, courtship, right. dirty laundry in public, right. a little more fun with it, right. okay? So they are really capitalizing. It's Lakers are showtime, and with all the things that go on, it actually embraces this. Not nearly to me as serious as the NFL. No. Right, in terms of their approach to media. Right. And that's why you get different flavors. So I don't think the Lakers, that it makes a difference, that really. I think that everybody's comfortable worldwide now what i think is interesting is your boy kobe mm -hmm. because like you said you they give all these questions to sort of set you up to say bad things right now what i this is mario hemsley's observation watch how kobe has to feign anger at his teammates uh, oh he's always done it he, yeah he but it's a fake ass anger right. see because really what he's doing is basking in the glory that he's taking as the team savior yeah, of he gets to go out and score 42 mm -hmm. and then they say how do you feel well I, I and watch how he says it all mellow well yeah i'm mad i'm really mad about 
what we're doing and how we mm-hmm. should come. F- I'm really angry. He kind of, you know what, Mario? He's so full of shit. He reminds me, <laughs> Mario, watch this. Now watch you, watch you guys. He reminds me of Mario. Now, now I want you guys to understand. Yeah, wait he, a minute, wait he, a he ain't as good as me. Wait, 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 Not wait. this area. <laughs> you better stick to basketball. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I outside your ass. <laughs> See, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> See, I want you to understand. It's not about it's not about the attitude. See, it's a part of it going that Mario. Will, see, Mario, because Mario does this. He, he he goes, you know, I'm gonna talk to you in a calm way. I'm gonna let you know how much your ass get on my nerves. Now, when you get really on my nerves, I'm gonna yell at your ass. And I'm, if I, I'm improving. <laughs> Please don't compare me to Kobe Bryant. Please do not compare me to are Kobe Bryant. See, some people want winner? that. Are you I don't winner? look up to him, so don't. I mean, <laughs> he plays basketball really good. <laughs> right. That's it. Okay, <laughs> that's it for me. That's <laughs> it. And to me, I don't put you on a big ass wall thing because you play a sport. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If that's all you do, you got to do a sport and be something else. Wait a minute. Ambassador or something. Wait a minute. He's a he's a winner, right? I guess in basketball. That's what I'm talking He's about. He's a winner in basketball. I don't know about his love life, his parenthood, all the other shit that really counts in the world, which ain't basketball. I don't know if he's a winner or not. Shit. Wait a minute. Well, you go, see, Mario will be the person that go to China, and everybody goes like this, Kobe, Kobe. He gets off the plane I say shit. and will be doing what they call the wave and say, stop. All of you guys are sheep. That's okay. what I tell him. That's what you, you tell him. You need them. me to keep you right. <laughs> You need me to tell you right. Right. <laughs> wait a minute. No, wait a minute. PMC understands. I'm, you want to see, but now, now, I'm not going to say, see, Mario's right, but what I realize about people who are winners, they go to a different level that most people do. And I'm saying the correlation is, no, no, Mario's not like And Kobe, you don't think you win in winner. every area, you're too. Win, yeah, you win in the area where you says, look, I'm on the stage of play right now, and on the stage of play, right. I don't play less. Right. That's the only thing I would say. No, and I agree with you because, <laughs> because, Part of the issue with our, uh, most of our heroes, right, right, is that you, they don't they don't stand up as heroes in all the other areas. Joe Namath was my right. hero when right. I was starting out playing football. Right. So all that Monday night shenanigans and all that stuff broke my heart. I know that all of our I heroes know. can't be heroes in every area. I know. I agree with you. So I mean, it's just me saying somehow or another you need a team out of the West, and I think OKC has become that team that everybody looks at a certain way, but they just don't have the personalities and all the glare of the superstardom the same they way. Don't. Kevin Durant. Maybe they can win because yeah. of that. Yeah, it's like San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. They're more exciting than San Antonio, but you wanted San Antonio to have that flair and glare like Miami Heat. Miami Heat is sitting up here and won one championship. San Antonio's won four, multiple, and it's under the radar. Isn't it so unfair that you get to be so good at your sport or your task, right. your job. Right. And then, unfortunately, you have to now get in front of the media and be something else. That's Just right. like the rest of you guys. <laughs> Just like the rest of you guys. See what I told How you? unfair. See, see it's what like I it's unfair for Norman Ross. Oh, see, I tried to tell you guys. Norman has to go get out in see, public. Now, and it, it's so unfair well, that PMC you? has to wrestle <laughs> with who he is. So we have to wrestle like they have to. When they have to get on the mic, right. they can't talk. Right. Well, shit, we have to get on the mic right. and figure out how to talk, too. And, and, the, th- and the good part get about over this, it. the good part <laughs> about this is that many NBA teams have somebody they carry. They actually wish they had a LeBron, a Kobe, <laughs> a Carmelo. And then, look, all these teams are doing great. Brooklyn's doing better. New York Knicks is doing better. But you do need that team from the the West to have this kind of rivalry. You know what's missing in the NBA championship? What? There's no real rivalry. Now, currently, real rivalry. Well, we got, Boston, but LA. they'll come back. I think it'll come back. I think part of it, ha- you know, rivalries have a lot to do with the players. That's right. And, you know, you, you had Larry Bird going up against Magic. So you have yet to have certain ones being defined, but they're getting there, right? Yeah, you need. They're you, getting there. But you know, you know what you need. Here's the part. It's like Westbrook to OKC is the one that can make you go there and say, "Man, he just plays with so- reckless abandon, but chaotic control." And you said he's a person that you'll look forward to more so than Kevin Durant, even though Kevin. But Durant's you need to be able. You say you're player. looking forward to him against so and so. That's what I'm and saying. And that's what's not there that's yet. That's not we, there yet. Yeah, it's still kind of like. Well, 
I thought we were going to get it when the Heat went against Oklahoma, and it wasn't. It wasn't really the. It wasn't really the, the, players, the head to head. They admired stuff. each other, right? And you didn't see the head to head, even on right. a bunch of levels. Don't you kind of think Wade right. versus uh, uh, Westbrook? Uh, you kind of think these you LeBron, need, and it need. didn't come out to nope. be. So it, I, they need more. They need more rivalries, right? They, they need, need more and, rivalries, and that's why I was saying L.A. Can present that on now a number of true. levels. That's all I'm saying. So you're saying. saying, now look at this. So basically, you're just saying LA could be the person to hate again. Yes. What PMC just said about me. Right. And Kobe. Yes. Well, yeah, I'm just playing the role. <laughs> That's right. It can be. Yeah. LA can, has played that. I mean, PMC's in Pittsburgh. Right. Who, you know, campaigns themselves as the. Right, you know, as the kind of working man's working yes. man's America. Yes. That's even more of America's team, Pittsburgh Steelers, and than nobody Dallas hates on Cowboys. They, no, you don't hate on. They got a hate. real brand. That's right. a working class America. Right, they act way more than Dallas. And, right, and Cowboys are the team that people would love to either love or hate, regardless. And so you end up wanting to see what you. Let's just look at it this way. They look at Jerry Jones and go like, "Aha! Look at all that money you spent. You guys are losing." They love to hate them even when they're well, losing. Sure. So when you look at the Lakers, everybody loves to see them dwell. But you don't want to see them bottom out and not in the playoffs. No, because that's just boring. Right. But that just happens. That not, in fact, that we, I don't say that for any of my big teams. Right. I was tired of seeing the New York Knicks. I, you know, as much as I talk shit to New Yorkers, I was like, okay, I'll give you a break. Y'all lost so damn much. I'm tired of sticking it in your face <laughs> about how you lose in that basketball. You know, they, they think they own basketball. Yeah, of course. New Yorkers think that this their street, sport. Street ball. Right, they're the, the only ball. ones, right? So you've been losing <laughs> for oh, so long. Don't be hating now. Don't be hating. <laughs> for so Carme- long. No, no, Carmelo's doing his job. He's the man I like is, Carmelo. He's doing it, man. That's to all I'm my saying. New York friends and okay. family. you still been losing in basketball <laughs> so long. Let me get props to Norm I- Cleveland. Put oh yeah, the Cleveland beat down on Lakers yesterday. Cleveland is doing it. I, uh, Kyrie Irving is the man. I mean, he can't do nothing with Kobe, but the team did exactly Cleveland. what I expected. Got to give Cleveland. Cleveland. I am out of my new new sports, man. We can get out of here because I knew it was going to be one of those moments. Hot sports today. Oh man, the commission and the two step. That's right, the commission, the two step. Victor Allen, written and produced his own special Neil Urban looking sports. That's Victor Allen. There he goes. Tune in. See the podcast.